beautiful uh, Mom Tonette Alliones and Mayor Treñas of uh, Iloilo, sir, uh, to all the speakers and, of course, our participants in this uh, Asia CEO Forum. Uh, for, before anything else, let me thank the uh, Asia CEO organization for the honor of being a speaker here at Asia CEO Iloilo to share how we can contribute to the solution in our country's pandemic crisis. Well, uh, first of all, uh, Mayor Trenas had heard a lot of uh, uh, good words about Iloilo City already, but uh, Mayor, please uh, take note of these uh, additional foggy points for you and your city. Congratulations for your successful solid waste management and sanitary landfill operations. Well, uh, I will commence uh, with a brief overview of uh, Western Visayas from the uh, environmental perspective. Western Visayas is uh, composed of six provinces, Aklan, Antique, Capiz, Guimaras, Iloilo, and Negros Occidental. The uh, region has a total land area of uh, 20,223.20 square kilometer, approximately 6.74% of the total land area of the Philippines. The uh, region has five key endemic species in the endangered or red list of the International Union for the Conservation of Nature, the uh, critically endangered Visayan warty pig, rufous-headed hornbill, and negros bleeding heart pigeon, and the endangered Philippine spotted deer and Visayas hornbill. In addition to this endemic species, the uh, region also hosts uh, threatened species that are migratory, such as the critically endangered hawksbill sea turtle, the endangered green sea turtle, and the world's most endangered shorebird uh, species, the uh, spoon-billed sandpiper. Western Visayas uh, region is one of the uh, richest in natural resources in our country. Mineral resources include uh, copper, gold, and silver. The uh, region is a key fisheries development area with 84 coastal municipalities, eight major fishing grounds, and inland bodies of water including the Negros Occidental Coastal Wetlands Conservation Area, which is the country's seventh wetland of international importance under the Ramsar Convention. Given that the DNR has a broad range of activities, and while we have only limited time in this forum, a short pambalsang basurero, let me focus your attention to the solid waste management problem of Iloilo and, of course, uh, the whole country. We all know that uh, the, Iloilo city, uh, the Iloilo city itself has no problem when it comes to solid waste. Because, as I said, I'm congratulating the mayor because of their success. But the uh, provinces beside it or the uh, areas and municipalities beside this has a lot of problem when it comes to the open tub site. Okay? Now, Loudmouth says that uh, banning single-use plastics well, yes, we are with you on this, but before that, let me ask you this realistic question. When we swallow a big chunk of food and you got choked, who is at fault? Is it the food or the person who swallowed it without even chewing it? If the waterways get clogged by the plastic bags, who do we blame? The plastic bag or the person who indiscriminately threw the plastic bags to the waterway? Now, are we really banning the use of plastics? Or it would be better if we will ban the plastic people around us who say that they care for the environment and yet they are the biggest culprit in the looming plastic problem. This question I leave to all of you to realize what is really the problem of our solid waste. Lucky are those ugly people that they come as the last but not the least. But talking about garbage, it is always the last and the least. The last and the least priority of a household and even the authority who has jurisdiction on the said matter, which is the local government. Based on the study of the National Solid Waste Management Commission, solid waste management can only be successful if they will dedicate at least 10% of their internal revenue allotment. However, based on the 10-year solid waste management plan of LGUs, only about 3 to 5% is being allocated by LGUs, which is uh, way, way low for a successful solid waste management. 
Though there is a law saying that we need to implement waste segregation, there is no clear policy of fines or penalties if indeed there is a clear violation in waste segregation at source. So the burden is with the garbage collector wherein they will be penalized if they accept unsegregated waste. But contrary to their objective, all they want to do is to immediately fill up their trucks and hold the waste to the sanitary landfill. Segregated or not, they will just fast track the collection without the check and balance of the local government if indeed proper segregation were implemented or not. Hence, the first stage of implementing RA-9003 is already a failure. We need the help of the local leaders that has jurisdiction on the said matter. But sad to say that local leaders become ineffective because they are under the mercy of the votes of their constituents. Since the issue of the solid waste is always the last and the least, the local government will not sacrifice its potential support from a constituent just because of a garbage issue. Most of the time, they just leave the problem to the next administration, forcing, forcing the situation to become what we saw called history repeats itself. And with that, one of the strategies that the DNR is proposing to local government leaders is to come up with a scheme wherein inter-barangay monitoring system will be implemented. Let me ask you, how can we avoid the effect of familiarity in the monitoring of solid waste management at the barangay level? We will come up with an inter-barangay monitoring system rather than being an antagonist. Ikaw pa ang lalabas na bida. We will create environmental warriors in each barangay to uh, do an inter-barangay monitoring where in barangay 1 will monitor barangay 2 and barangay 2 will monitor barangay 3 and barangay 3 will monitor barangay 1. In support of the said scheme through the effort of the National Solid Waste Management Commission, its cities and municipalities will be compelled to come up with respective ordinances with a clear policy on segregation at source. Fines and penalties will be the main content of the said ordinance our proposal, uh, in which our proposal will be on the first offense. They will be notified verbally by the uh, environmental warriors telling them that they need to segregate their solid waste. The first offense is an information campaign but it is a direct communication to the violator. A warning citation ticket will be issued in the second offense. On the third offense, a strict imposition of fine that is not less than 1,000 or community service. Our objective is to discipline and not to punish the people. This is a third world country wherein it is hard for the informal settlers to take in food passing through the small alleys leading to their houses more so to take out garbage, which is again the last and least in their priorities. On the community service, it is a source of shame campaign wherein we will use the regular waterways and coastal cleanups by LGUs as instructed by the DILG. The violators of proper solid waste management will wear a t-shirt that bears the name of a master cleaner, signifying that they are the Pasawan or the violators. Now we tackle the issue on recycling of household waste. From the households, if one can implement proper segregation of source of biodegradables, recyclables, residual waste, and the special waste, recyclables can be brought directly to recyclable dealers and junk shops. eco aids will no longer be needed, and the materials recovery facilities can be dedicated to receiving residuals with potential for recycling. In that way, secondary sorting will be avoided to prevent the scattering of garbage from its source and should reach the MRF and eventually the landfill without scattering. Special waste like bulbs, batteries, including bulky waste, should also be separated, but we need a separate forum to discuss this matter because if we will tackle this, we might end up discussing it for several days. Nobody has foreseen that face masks, surgical gloves, face shields, and even PPEs will end up in our doorsteps. With this COVID-19 pandemic, hindi pa nga tayo nakakarao sa solid waste problem natin, heto na naman ang bago. With this circumstance, the National Solid Waste Management Commission came up with a new identification of waste called household healthcare waste. 
to save the people from viral infection considering that these ways are highly infectious. The use of face masks and face shields and other PPEs are meant to protect us from the virus. With proper disposal of these household healthcare waste gives us an assurance that we protected ourselves. The people around us, the recipient of this garbage, which are the collectors, the sanitary landfill personnel, and the most important of them all, the people of the next generation. Let's go back to the issue of plastics in the country. Until this very moment, there is no clear buyback or life cycle of the recyclables. This uh, statement of mine is dedicated to the multinationals. Yes, taxes were being paid by producers. However, environmental impact of their produce was not considered. So, we will come up with environmental fees to be levied to manufacturers that produces or uses products that are detrimental to the environment. For 20 years of existence of RA9003, there is no clear policy on the retrieval, or shall we say, a buyback scheme. In our proposal, the producer needs to report consumption of the packaging of any component of the product produced. Example, if you are consuming about 10 tons per year, you need to justify to the DNR the amount of waste generated in the production of a product. If you can buy back, for example, about 10 tons or more than that, then you will earn environmental credits. As you accumulate environmental credits, you will be exempted from environmental fees. Our objective is not your money, but your obligation to ensure a healthy environment for the future generation. We can say that this is a very long shot, but this is doable. Another example, if you are selling a product neatly packaged in a plastic packaging in a box, the consumer can receive a 3 to 5% discount if the packaging is returned. We will create a technical working group involving all the stakeholders to make it easy for the community to do business in harmony with the environment. One of the big projects of the DNR is the PBB, or Pera sa Basura ng Bata, program that will create culture change among the Filipino people starting off with the children. With that, let me present to you, here in my left, our new partner encouraging the uh, children to join us in our fight in protecting the environment. Our mascot, PBB, or shall I say, Pinas, the Basura Buster. We are focused on engaging the children because adults are harder to convince, just like us. In Tagalog, pasaway na kasi. Once the children learn proper waste management, they can talk to their parents about it, and hopefully these adults would listen and then realize and be persuaded on the importance of a healthy environment. It aims to pass the trash problem in the country by making the kids aware of waste recycling from their homes. When they practice recycling, they can pass on the lesson to their parents. Then segregating solid waste at source will be addressed. We will do the door-to-door -door approach where we will go to the houses of the children to get the trash they have collected, such as plastic bottles and papers. Business knowledge will be promoted to the children where in segregation process will give them a chance to earn their own money. What are single-use plastics? According to plastic manufacturers, these are all recyclables. Now, can anyone in this forum tell me how to retrieve or buy back the single-use plastics? As in 100% retrieval, most of these plastics are contaminated with food sauce, soft drinks, or even COVID-19. If these producers can explain how they can buy back after making business, then we at the DNR or NSWMC are very much willing to consider reviving these products again. Now, let's go to the single-use sandbox packs that are being used as garbage bags for disposal in landfills. These are the thin field sandbox packs that are being used by our less fortunate citizens. We need to come up with a scheme on how to retrieve or buy them back. With the uh, assistance from the government, maybe we can come up with a sturdy material for a sandbox bag that we can use as garbage bag. But informal settler families produce only a small amount of solid waste, so they keep on using sandbags. 
And what's uh, and what gets our uh, eyes attention are the uh, shocking colors of these plastics. But mind you, sandbags are lightweight materials, so they usually end up in our waterways when blown by the wind or scattered by stray animals. There are a lot of sandbags, but what I'm talking about here are thin film sandbags that can be easily ripped off. Since this is a thin film plastic, it is not suitable to contain heavy commodities, hence it usually ends up in our waterways or even the ocean. So what will be our solution? Maximize the retrieval, operation, and recycling of the sandbags by creating more recycling facilities dedicated for these sandbags. But as of this moment, sad to say, there is still no clear sustainable alternative for sandbags. The thick sandbag, based on our study, can be used more than three times, but most of us use it only once and then reuse it again as trash bags. This now becomes our problem. The National Solid Waste Management Commission issued the resolution number 1363 uh, uh, directing the DNR to prepare and implement the banning of the use of unnecessary single-use plastics by national government agencies, local government units offices, and all other government control offices. The uh, unnecessary single-use plastics identified as follows. Plastic cups lower than uh, 0 0.2 millimeter in thickness, plastic drinking straws, plastic coffee stirrers, plastic spoons, plastic forks, plastic knives, plastic labo, and thin filled sandbags lower than 15 microns. We are not telling the people to ban the use of plastic, but we are encouraging people to refuse, reuse, and recycle and be guided by the decomposition time of waste in landfills. Talking of plastic packaging, a lot of us want to face it out and revive the paper packaging instead. But again, history repeats itself. They say that plastics were created to save our forest. When we go back to paper packaging, are we going to cut our woods again? In Section 29 of Republic Act 9003 or the Ecological Solid Risk Management Act of 2000, non-environmentally acceptable products shall not be prohibited unless there are alternatives available which are not more than 10% greater cost than the disposable product. What we have right now as an alternative is the starch from cassava that will cost more than 300% of the original cost of the uh, plastic sandoval. It is stated in the RA9003 that it should not exceed 10% of the original cost of the phased out product. On biodegradable ways, some of our local government units do not fully enforce or implement their mandate of collection and management primarily because of its bad odor. But if we can come up with the resealable canisters like the ones being used by paint products, then we can control the odor of the said biodegradable waste from the origin to the composting plant. The mandatory segregation at source has to be fully implemented to ensure an effective management of biodegradable waste and to avoid contamination of possible recyclable materials. This administration is coming up with a scheme that will give the right direction for the collection of biodegradable waste and creating more composting facilities into something valuable. This is to assure the people that all produced waste of households will be dealt with accordingly. How did we attain success in Boracay? Number one is political will coming from our president, Rodrigo Roa Duterte. The determination of our uh, secretary, Roy A. Simatu, and the hard work of the men and women of this administration in turning the cesspool into a paradise again. When we started cleaning up Boracay, nobody is above the law. Maybe most of our friends also think that we're crazy when, we're, when we started it because so it sounds like, uh, you know, something like impossible to do those things. But what you can see in Boracay, the rich and poor are treated equally. Cases are slapped against all violators, whatever his or her economic status and political affiliation. Walang palakasan, walang payamanan. 
lahat ng trabaho po namin para sa bayan lamang. And with that, I rest my case. Thank you very much and have a nice day ahead. Thank you for listening and stay safe, everybody.